Granulomatous inflammation is a specialized type of inflammation, which occurs when the usual chronic inflammatory response is unable to eliminate the offending agent. Typical example is tuberculosis. Neutrophil is the major cell type in acute inflammation. However, in chronic inflammation, macrophage is the predominant cell type. Macrophage is one of the major components of the mononuclear phagocyte system, also known as the reticuloendothelial system. This system is composed of closely related cell types, including blood monocytes and tissue macrophages. Actually, tissue macrophages are derived from blood monocytes. When a monocyte migrates to a tissue from blood, it is transformed into a macrophage. This transformation is mediated by various chemicals, including adhesion molecules and cytokines. Macrophages found in different tissues are given different names. For example, liver macrophages are called Kupfer cells. Macrophages in the spleen and lymph nodes are called synesthesiocytes. In the lungs, we have alveolar macrophages. And in the brain, we have microglia. A macrophage should be activated to elicit its functions. Microbial products, cytokines, and interferon gamma act as stimuli for macrophage activation. Activated macrophage has two major functions. One is to get rid of the offending agent, and the other one is to initiate the repairing process. To initiate the repairing process, macrophage secretes various chemicals, including reactive oxygen and nitrogen species, proteases, which digest the pathogen, cytokines, coagulation factors, and arachidonic acid metabolites. To initiate the repairing process, they secrete growth factors such as platelet-derived growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, and transforming growth factor beta, fibrogenic cytokines which stimulate fibrosis, angiogenic factors which cause angiogenesis and collagen remodelers. Even though the purpose of macrophages is to eliminate the injurious agent, they can cause damage to the surrounding tissue as well. This is due to the activation of reactive oxygen and nitrogen species and proteases. Therefore, tissue destruction is a characteristic feature in chronic inflammation. In acute inflammation, Macrophages disappear soon after the injurious agent is removed, either by dying off or making their way into lymphatics. However, in chronic inflammation, macrophages tend to accumulate at the site of inflammation. This is due to the continuous recruitment of macrophages from blood, local proliferation of macrophages at the site of inflammation, and immobilization of macrophages. Immobilization is due to the secretion of migration inhibitory factor by lymphocytes. Now let's discuss about the pathogenesis of granulomatous inflammation. As already mentioned, granulomatous inflammation occurs when the offending agent is resistant to be killed by the macrophages. So, the macrophages are stimulated to become epithelioid cells, which have more microbial killing ability than macrophages. So, granuloma is actually a collection of epithelioid cells surrounded by a rim of lymphocytes. Sometimes there may be multinucleated giant cells and fibroblasts as well. In parasitic infections, eosinophils also present in the granuloma. Multinucleated giant cells are formed by the fusion of several epithelioid cells, and there are many different types of multinucleated giant cells, which will be discussed later in this video. Granulomatous inflammation causes more tissue destruction than the usual chronic inflammatory response due to the high microbial killing ability of epithelioid cells. There are two types of granulomas according to their pathogenesis. These include foreign body granuloma and immune granuloma. Foreign body granuloma occurs when the offending agent cannot be phagocytosed by a single macrophage. It usually occurs against materials such as talc, suture material, and other types of fiber. There is no immune response in foreign body granuloma. The foreign agent can be identified at the center of the granuloma, as indicated by the red arrow in this image. Immune granulomas occur when the offending agent is poorly degradable. In this type of granulomas, macrophages engulf the bacterial antigens, process them, and present them to T-lymphocytes. T-lymphocytes in response secrete cytokines, which help digest the foreign agent and activate other lymphocytes, and they secrete more and more gamma interferon which activates macrophages. Now let's discuss about the different cell types in granulomatous inflammation. Epithelioid cells are derived from the activated tissue macrophages around the inflamed area. They have a pale eosinophilic cytoplasm. 
dispersed chromatin due to increased synthetic activity, an elongated nucleus, which has a shape of a footprint, less phagocytic ability than macrophages, enhanced secretory and more microbial killing ability than macrophages. All the multinucleated giant cells are formed by the fusion of epithelioid cells. Langhans giant cells have their nuclei at the periphery of the cells, resembling a horseshoe. They are typically seen in tuberculosis. Foreign body type giant cells have randomly arranged nuclei, they usually occur in foreign body granulomas. Tauten giant cells are formed by the union of foamy macrophages in fat necrosis. In the periphery of the cell, there are fat containing vacuoles, and they push the nuclei towards the center of the cell. There are three morphological patterns in granulomas. In case-eating granulomata, the center of the granuloma undergoes caseous type of necrosis. It is commonly seen in tuberculosis. In non-necrotizing granulomata, there is no central necrosis. Seen in sarcoidosis, leprosy, and Crohn's disease. Finally, in suppurative granulomata, the center undergoes suppurative necrosis. This type of granulomas is seen in cat scratch disease, fungal infections, and rarely in tuberculosis. Okay, that covers almost everything you should learn about granulomatous inflammation as a medical undergraduate. Hope someone found this video interesting and helpful. If you like this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.